Hello everyone, welcome to the King Knight Any% Percent tutorial guide. This guide will be covering the turncoat route. This is a beginner's guide, and this is the quickest guide put together after the first few months of the game's release, so not everything is going to be super optimal in this guide. Before explaining the first level, we're going to take a look at the movement that King Knight players are going to have to familiarize themselves with. Alright, so I'm going to explain some basic movement stuff for King Knight. And I do mean really basic, but I'm also going to cover some of the late game stuff for those who are just looking to understand how the character moves. So whenever you press attack, King bashes. If you do that in the air, he stops after a certain point. If you press attack again, anytime after you start bashing, you roll. And you can chain these back and forth as many times as you like. Whenever you see movement in a level, the most important part is uh, figuring out how to space and maximize the uptime. Because this is the fastest way to be moving around. You're going to be spending most of your time rolling. And from there on, you're just kind of figuring out, uh, am I doing like three rolls, four rolls, however many rolls, because you can jump anytime you want out of a grounded bash. So you can do like bash jump into a bash roll. Or for this first section, you could just like three bash rolls. That's fine too. It depends on what you're comfortable with, whatever your muscle memory is. Just make sure that you're trying to optimize it as often as you can. If you bash into a wall, you get a spin. If you roll into a wall, you bonk. If an enemy will die in one hit, uh, you will roll straight through it. For jumps like this, you actually want to make sure that you're pressing the roll at the last possible moment. You start to drop basically as soon as you start rolling. Uh, so you will not make it over this unless if you actually are doing the roll at the last possible moment. And then for multiple dirt blocks, if you want to make sure you're rolling through both of them, you want to time your roll so that it starts as close to the first one as possible. So you roll through both of them. The other form of movement I want to cover is uh, turncoat movement. Whenever you hold the button down for turncoat, uh, you have a certain amount of time to start rolling at that point. You can get six rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then it just it's done at that point. In one jump, if you jump and immediately start doing turncoat rolls, uh, you can get about three of them comfortably. One, two, three. Um, the first two are the ones that are actually going to be going on the way up, uh, but for the most part you're getting one, two, three. As far as uh, using the Brigandine into Turncoat, uh, you just want to cancel that pretty much before the end of the bash. Um, so before you would reach the top of your bash there, you would just be canceling it with the turn with the Turncoat. And then from there, you start applying your, your rolls to gain that extra height. Uh, if you do this sideways, you can, but you'll just kind of fall out of it. It's not particularly useful. Uh, the upwards ones are the more useful ones. And now that we understand movement, let's go ahead and take a look at the first level. While your basic movement may be flexible, I'm going to point out when things are going to be done in specific ways, like this jump right here, and the jump across this second gap right here. Uh, both have to be timed so that you make it across the gap, otherwise you'll fall short. Some tricks, like this one coming up, are a little bit more precise. You need to bash at level with the ground to be able to jump cancel the bash. But a lot of the more precise tricks are also kind of ignorable, so long as you can make it through the level, until you're looking for a much better time. There's a slightly more optimal version of this room that I actually don't bother doing, because it's a very small time save. In the grand scheme of things, I'd rather be spending my time practicing bosses and more difficult tricks that actually save significant chunks of time. Money is fairly tight, but you shouldn't be having to go out of your way for it. This medal above the Bubble Dragon will be your first medal in the run, and that'll be it for this stage. These stages are super short, and so shall be these tutorials. So, see you next time in the Mossy Mountain. Thanks for watching.